Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Come right on in, my friend. Hope you're having a good day. And I hope there are some brand new friends out there. You just kind of was doing a little channel surfing, and I'm glad you stopped. Hope you'll stay with us. Uh, we have some very, very loyal viewers. Uh, I can certainly tell that by the mail and all your nice comments, email and all of that. And so I'm hoping there'll be some more of those brand new people today who will become permanent, regular friends with us. So welcome. I have a wonderful guest today. She's a friend of mine and her name is Susan Pippen. Uh, she's been in the ministry a long time with her uh, husband who's a, been a pastor for years and now they're in an executive commission a position with the Assemblies of God of Florida, the Penn Florida uh, District. And we're going to talk about Susan's uh, coffee break devotional. Look at that. I, I, how long did it take her to write that? But it's not just that. It's the content of this book. I'm anxious for you to meet Susan. She's absolutely delightful. She's the women's pre presbyter for the women of the Penn Florida District of the Assemblies of God. And uh, some exciting things are happening there as more and more women are going into the ministry. So you will love her. I'm going to fix a sausage and spinach pasta bake with Stephanie. And I'm telling you, there's enough to feed everybody in St. Petersburg, Florida today. That's my hometown. It was the biggest recipe, and I figured out why. And I haven't told Stephanie yet, but I will tell her why. Uh, before I join her, though, this is the first time that we have offered what we're calling Stephanie's necklace. You wonderful viewers have stayed right with her as she went through a cancer battle with great victory. I'm so glad to be able to tell you that. And this little heart necklace, it's got the uh, ribbon, the pink ribbon for cancer awareness. And we're offering that today for the gift of $25. Just ask for Stephanie's necklace. If you use your credit card, 1-800-229-0059, and the address is on there if you want to write to us, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And I think you'll, I just think it's just the prettiest thing, and I think you will like one. Uh, I know I think of that I lost my dad with cancer. I lost an aunt and an uncle. Both of my children are cancer survivors. I hate cancer. I hate it with a passion. And I'm so glad when we can give a victorious report like Stephanie. Here yes. she is. Yes. How do you, hey, how do you like your necklace? I love it. Thank you. It's beautiful. Uh huh. And it's got your name all over it. Yes, it does. Thank you. Hey, I figured, hey. <laughs> I figured out why this recipe is so humongous. Okay. I got it out of a recipe book called The Church. I know, yeah, the church or southern, something church no, or something. No, it's church, church, and that's why it's so, because you could feed a whole church with yes, it. Yes, this is for a so church So you might want to do half of this recipe. Well, or, or make the whole thing and divide it in two and freeze, freeze half, because uh -huh. then you have a complete meal done for, yeah. for another night. I think we'll be feeding people here at the station for the next four days with this thing. Um, she put a thing on her Facebook that was so interesting total frustration i mean if you can read facebook and know that you're screaming and howling and you're I'm angry put the, yeah let me just real quick yeah i have fake sausage in here turkey sausage i have onions that are sauteed i'm gonna put some garlic in here and then you can tell your yes. story thank you go and i saw this on facebook and you could tell it's total frustration a little angry and oh, so what was it is the my daughter papers? well <laughs> my daughter's going to college <clears throat> And you have to fill out all this paperwork, and one of it's called FAFSA. It's college aid, which we're not even able to get anyway, so I don't know why I need to fill it out. And it's the most frustrating, aggravating. I cried. She actually I cried. cried. Yeah, because I got to the point of utter frustration with mm -hmm. it. I had to call them. I had to chat with them online and still didn't get it resolved. And no matter what password or no, no matter, matter what, they what sent I you, it, it was work. all incorrect. And she can't go to college until this is filled out. And college is coming fast. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Do you yeah. want some onions in there? Well, she put some in already. Oh, okay. I, I think she didn't want all those. Okay. Think, yeah. That's a lot There's of onions. Yeah. I put all the onions in the first bag. Yeah. So we have a can of crushed tomatoes. This has a lot of liquid in it, friends. We have it, a can it, of it diced tomatoes. It absorbs it, actually. Yeah. We're going to let this heat up. I have this hooked 
hooked on high, you're going to want to let this cook a lot longer. Also, I, I know Stephanie pretty well, and she doesn't cry real easily. I didn't cry hardly all through <laughs> breast cancer, okay? And FAFSA <laughs> made me cry. What? Okay, so I have oregano, basil, and pepper I'm going to put in here, okay? And again, when you're cooking at home, let these, let these flavors get together and marry and have a relationship. We're speed cooking, okay? But it's still going to taste really yummy. Honey, pepper. those were government papers. They do that on purpose. I am. Oh, I have never. I, I texted my daughter. I said, okay, I'm crying. She's like, don't cry. I'm like, oh, don't my cry. gosh. You want some half and half in there? Yeah, we can go ahead and put that in. That's half and half. We're going to let this bubble up real quick. And then we're simply going to put in spinach that's been thawed and, um, and drained. Yeah. And then we have Squeeze whole wheat pasta, which yeah. is more yeah. healthy. A frozen. I wonder how the fresh spinach would work in there. It would probably be good. Because I, I always have fresh spinach. Yeah, home. that would be good. So let this just bubble up for okay. a second. I'm going to go ahead and put, every, put the, salt, the spinach in, too. Let it all get hot at once, yeah. Ooh, it's got to be good. Yeah. But yep, so... That's where we if are. If I find it, anything else in that, quote, quote church cookbook. Make I it, because we we'll, can make two meals. Yeah, we can do that, or we can cut it in half. Oh, there's just so. nothing better, though, to come home from work and be able to take a, a meal out of the freezer, yeah. and it's already done. Yeah. And you have taught us that. Yes. Because this girl, what, do you take a Saturday a month or It's Sunday afternoon, weeks? usually. I'll just, yeah. I'll brown up a whole bunch of hamburger. I'll cook up a whole bunch of chicken. I'll make a few meals, and then when I come home at night, it's number done. one, I don't have to worry about what we're eating. Mm -hmm. And number two, I don't have to like worry about making the whole entire thing. Some of it's already yeah. done. Yep. Okay, so again, I'm speed cooking, please. So you I'm gonna put some of I'm gonna put Yeah. Do you wanna put all that in there? I that am not like putting all lot. of that in there. For, you know, you for have a to modify as you go. Yeah. Be creative. Yeah. Okay, so we get this all mixed up. We have a sprayed pan. And then we're going to put Parmesan and mozzarella on top, and then we're going to bake it. And this will all no be kidding. in the recipe, which is free, so you can request the recipe. We need to recipe. get the word out to every. Oh, I just about fell down. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I turned my ankle. Uh, Are you okay? We, yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, we can get the word out to everybody in this building. You don't need to bring your lunch for a month. Right? So... But okay. I think anybody watching this could know that we got something good cooking This here. looks so good. And you know what? I totally would never use the fake sausage because, ugh. But I will use hog sausage in this for this. I'm going to try this at home. Yeah, I need that pan. Stephanie kills her own sausage. Right? Okay. Yeah. We're, we're going we're gonna to make two out of that. But I'm gonna Yeah, look it. at all that food. Uh-huh. That's crazy. Get you a nice roll and a good salad and you got it made. Yeah. I'm going to get some of this Parmesan cheese. Mozzarella and Parmesan. And Parmesan. And um, it looks really, really good. Susan probably was it. the last one to go to a church supper. You know, she's pastor's wife. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Super easy. And it absorbs all that good moisture. It's not dry. And super frugal. Mm -hmm. What are you laughing at me? If you want this recipe, we'll email it to you. Or we'll mail Very it good. to you. If you send us an envelope with your name and a stamp on it. And that information is coming up on your screen. And then you're going to meet Susan Pippen, one of my good friends. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may send your email request to artheline at rippy.org, or you may write to us at the address on your screen, and in doing so, please include a self-addressed stamped envelope. We thank you for being a part of our Homekeepers family. It is a delight for me to uh, introduce to you and to welcome to Homekeeper Susan Pippen. And Susan, I was wondering, how long has it been since you've been to Good Church Supper with all those good uh, casseroles? <laughs> well, actually, it was just last night. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> we, we seem to still attend those. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Arthelene. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank oh, I'm so glad to have you, uh, multi-talented lady. And you're in a new position now. 
pastor's wives. Right. Yes, ma'am. Actually, credential ladies in general, staff pastor's wives, mm -hmm. um, lay pastors, uh, just whoever has that call. My Actually, my responsibility <clears throat> as the presbyter for credential ladies is to encourage women that have that call on their life, to encourage them to take that step and proceed to... Um, study for their credentials. You know, we live in a world and a nation where people are asking questions, and it's important to have biblical answers yeah. for those questions. Yeah, and, and to be credentialed, you have to be able to answer a few questions. You do. So. You do. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> now, um, I was uh, telling the audience about Susan's Coffee Break devotional. This this is not your run-of-the-mill. Run-of-the-mill, first place, it's big. Yes. And it has... Um, 365. It does. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a lot of devotional books, but there's none quite like this. This this really has application. Those are, many of those are life experiences. And sometimes I feel like a reporter looking for a story because I can hear someone say something or something can happen during the day and God will just drop in my spirit. You the word can apply to that. Mm -hmm. There are so many life applications, and then there's just um, stories out of the Bible that you know have just touched my heart. What, what was it that motivated you to write that many and then, and then go through the publishing? A book is not easy. It is not. Back in 2006, the Lord dropped into my spirit to write an encouraging word for our ladies in our church and all of those ladies that were on my email. And just to be truthful with you, my very first encouraging word was not an original. I copied it out of Apples of Gold. Mm -hmm. It was on love. You know, love, the true godly love will empty hospitals. It will empty prisons. And that was my very first devotion. And so I did that, and, and the ladies just loved it. So I continued every day. Uh, writing an another devotion and my husband was so patient with me many times I would be up late at night just waiting on that perfect word from God but that was in 2006 and by the time 2011 came when the book was published I had compiled all of those daily devotions the ones I thought were the very best and had them published in that book. I think there's very few that are 365 there's quite a few 30-day right. devotionals right. and all that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to um, go over some of these. Okay, sure. Uh, I hope you remember them. <laughs> I do, I do, hopefully. <laughs> okay, um, one of them is called Attic Living. Does that oh, ring a bell? yes, yes, yes. And you, you're using the scripture where, um, oh, I didn't write down, but where it's better to... Uh, what, eat, eat, in an, eat in an attic or something than to be with a nagging wife. That's right, kind of a right, right. short version. You know, you know uh, my husband and I will be married for 50 years in February, and we are so different in our personalities. And um, I came from a family of, well, I, my grandparents raised me, so basically, you know, grandparents spoil you and, mm -hmm. and I was raised as an only child although I have brothers and sisters but he came from a family of five I was used to getting my way he very seldom achieved his way so um, you know that that's probably what that's talking about you know there's nothing worse than a nagging wife and uh, so we have learned to um, complement one another with our differences Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, we're so different, and yet I believe that God puts opposites together because we need to fill in the voids. We all have um, areas in our life where we need help, and we have to admit that. You know, I think it's in the Proverbs 2, where it's just iron sharpens iron. Yes. I just wonder yes. if that isn't a, a message to married people. That is so true. That is so true. And I look at even the church and, and ministry with my credential ladies. Um, ladies, it, this is, this is a, just a statistic for you, but the ladies um, in Penn, Florida, in the Assemblies of God, they represent the fastest growing demographic of credential holders in the Assembly of God, the women. 
and but many times they are unrepresented because they don't have a place per se in the church and I try to encourage them when they receive their credentials their ordination to you know you may not have a pulpit ministry you may have to branch out into the world and you know the homeless mm -hmm. are not going to show up on your doorstep mm -hmm. your the church doorstep you're going to have to go into the yeah. woods and bring them in the special needs people are not going to show yeah. up you're going to have to go I just did a yes. show on that yes. Yes. on the special needs mm -hmm. of the church um, before we leave this wife thing I've discussed on the show before several times um, understanding men they they have a need to be appreciated they do and um, I used to tell the ladies what's it going to cost you to just say Mm. thanks for working so hard for the family right, right but a lot of women would say well I work too <laughs> but it's, it's just almost nothing but can bring forth such a good yeah. good result right men need to be respected and appreciated for who they are and women need to be loved for who they are and when you can combine those two qualities you know even though your personalities may be totally different you mm -hmm. will make it mm -hmm. that is so true and as women, we do need to learn to respect our husbands. They do work hard. Mm -hmm. And if we are a nagging wife, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, that is just going to cause him not to even want to try. And we yeah, have that's to why be they so careful. eat in the attic. <laughs> <laughs> Foil Solomon. <laughs> yes, really yes, yes. Draw, yes, you know, a metaphor. Was. Okay, you got one a casual Christian, and you use the... Um, the scripture, Ephesians 6, 4, you know, and train up uh, in, in the instruction of the Lord. Uh, and your word is to be serious, not casual. I, I was looking back over our terms in the term in the ministry. And I remember one especially. Uh, a woman who was waiting for her husband mm -hmm. to become the spiritual leader. Mm -hmm. Now, hi there. No way he was ever going to be the spiritual leader. And... Uh, my thing is take them to Sunday school anyway. Right. Get them in the house of God. Get them with Christian friends and all. That you can't be casual about right. the things of God with your kids. Right. We have to be intentional. As long as our boys lived in our home, we have two sons. Mm -hmm. They we required them to go to church. Mm -hmm. It was a requirement. There was no question. Um, are you going with us today? There was no question. They were going. And you know, the train up a child in the way that they should go. Mm -hmm. that, that is not only in taking them to church. I believe that's training them how to take care of their bodies. There's so many aspects yeah. to that. Our body is a, the spiritual temple. And we forget that the health is involved in all of that. But, you know, they may get away from God. Yeah. They may do that. They may. But our job is to, while they're under our roof, yes, um, yes. To, uh, to make sure. They want to see reality. Mm -hmm. That's what, even talking about the millennials today, they want to see the real power of God. Mm -hmm. And if our children do not see at home what they see in the church they're not going to believe what mm -hmm. is in the church it has to be the round yeah, it has to be at home it, it does mm -hmm. yes uh you also have a great one called are we there yet okay do you remember that yes, one i do i do yeah uh and you use the scripture the race is not to the swift but it's to the <laughs> one that just plods along you'll find that in ecclesiastes and in paul's writing um that was so good because there were four kids in my family and you get in a car and go on a trip. It's like, are we there yet? How long will it be when we right, get there? Right. Or, Mom, he's looking at me. <laughs> or, Mom, he's touching me. Uh, yes. And uh, so we do have to persevere. Are we there yet? No, we're not there yet. But we will be there. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to set goals in front of our children. If you go into a nursing home, you will see the next season portrayed on the wall because it's a goal that they see and they look forward to it. And with children, it's the same thing. No, we're not there yet, but we are on our way and mm -hmm. we're going to make it. Mm -hmm. You just be patient. Mm -hmm. And they have to see that same patience in us as mm -hmm. well. Uh, this is a book I really believe would minister to you. It's called Susan's Coffee Break Devotional. There's information on your screen right now. It's, it's her email address. 
And uh, if you want to write that down and you can uh, be in contact with her to um, learn more about it and how, how you can get it. But Susan, it's just great stuff. I just want to commend you. It's right where we live. It's understandable and uh, it's got scripture to back it up. Now, um, this one a lot of us are facing today and that's uh, does age matter? We're, we're into that First Peter 3 <laughs> chapter where, uh, you know, he tells us not to worry about how we look, but what's on the inside. <laughs> Do you think Peter really knew women? <laughs> I, I think he did. I think he did. But, um, you know, we've talked about this. People are living longer these days. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, sometimes we just give up too soon with uh, what we feel like we can mm -hmm. accomplish in life. And, you know, with our ministry, with adult ministries, we try to encourage people to finish strong, to pass that baton, and uh, do it effectively. Um, you know, Goldie Mir was 70 when she became Prime Minister mm -hmm. of Israel, and that was just the beginning. Mm -hmm. So we should continue and, and never give up and just keep persevering. I believe until our last breath that God has a work for each one of us to do. And, and when we find that out, we will be content. Um, you know, I don't believe the word retirement is in the Bible. I've never seen I've it. I've never seen it. And there, there are statistics that when people retire and they have nothing to, one of the, my best friends said to me, you do not retire from something, you retire to something. And it's one of the right. best things I've ever heard. Right. And um, I'm still working now, but that time is coming. And people should think about it because there's a lot of opportunities for ministry. Right. There it's are. Awful and many of them, I believe today, Arthleen, are on a one-to-one. -one. Mm -hmm. You know, it may not be per se inside of the church building. Uh -huh. I believe there's more opportunity outside those walls if we would just be alert. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible tells us to be alert. Mm -hmm. People are hurting. Mm -hmm. They're asking questions. They don't understand mm -hmm. what is going on in our world. And I believe we live in the finest hour of the church. We do. We're the only ones that can make a difference. It, exactly. And we need Positive to take those difference. opportunities. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, and so the bottom line is don't listen to culture that much uh, where everything is on youth and appearance and all that. Uh, Peter makes a really good point there. A really good one, too, you've got in here is where was God? And that's... That's a question that's always thrown at the church with some regularity. Why did God let that happen? My husband died very tragically. And my pastor at the time and my mother, we got in the car and went to the high school. Meredith was 15. And I asked the principal to bring her to me. And I pulled her down on my lap. And I said, your daddy is gone. He died. And the first word, why did God let that happen? Mm. That's the first thing out of a 15-year-old mm. who knew the Lord. Right. She knew all this. Uh, and you, the people, why, where was God when the airplanes flew into the building and all that? And you have addressed this. Right. God is always there. We may not see him per se, but he never leaves us. He never forsakes us. And if we will just wait to see God's perfect plan, see, we don't see the big picture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But God sees the big picture. And God is not the author of all of that. You see, we have to understand, yes, maybe God allowed it, but God is working through all of that for our good. And we live in a sin-depraved world. So things are going to happen. Mm -hmm. But God will work it all out for good. My mother died a tragic death when I was six months old in a car accident. And I could, I could question God. I could never question Him for the rest of my life. But, you know, I've seen how God has worked in my life. He's turned it around for good. And I do not criticize or complain. I say, thank you, God, for what you're doing in my life. Also, I, everybody needs to remember, when you were born, you're popping out of your mother's womb, God was there and he handed you a free will and mm -hmm. there it yes. is. Yes. And he doesn't mess with it that yes. much. Right, right. We he do he really choice. doesn't. He says, These, this is your choice. And, and <clears throat> he didn't create a bunch of robots to love him. Right. He created human beings with a heart and that was their choice whether they love him or not. And 
um, I think if there's anything America needs to hear is that you make the choice. We excuse everybody. We excuse every kind of behavior. It was not their fault and all. No. Right. He gave us a free right. will. He did it. And I believe 99% of what happens to us are because of the choices, mm -hmm. the decisions that we make. Mm -hmm. And the Bible tells us, submit your ways into the Lord and He will establish mm -hmm. your plans. Mm -hmm. And we, we try to do everything on our own. And so, yes, um, God is always there. He is. I can say that in the situations I've been through when I have really trusted Him. I have seen Him mm -hmm. in the worst situations. I can vouch for that. Yes. Yes. Anybody that's walked with him very long, yes. uh, they know that and they know they can trust him. we got just a couple minutes. Uh, let me remind you again, I'm talking to Susan Pippen, the author of this book with 365 wonderful, wonderful uh, topics uh, that similar to what we've been discussing. And the information has been on the screen as to how you can reach her. And I think I've got time for one more uh, because there's so many. We, we could do several shows on this. And that was, uh, it's a devotional called Inventory. It really spoke mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> especially when you think of, I was in the Christian church for five years and they had communion every Sunday. When I left, I missed that. Right. I love communion. And, and the Bible says as oft as you do it. Right. So you think you want to do it often, really? Right. Um, but he says, examine yourselves. Right. We're so good at examining everybody we else. Are. But he was saying also take inventory of yourself, right? Right. You know, Arthelene, I believe busyness has robbed us of some of the most valuable aspects that God has for us. We wake up and if we're not careful, we will not go to the Word. We will go to Facebook. We will go to our phones. And we do have to take inventory. God, you know, if we live and move and have our being in Him, mm -hmm. we cannot forget that. Mm -hmm. There's other religions in the world that are so disciplined with prayer and supplication, yeah. and we are a little sloppy. Yeah, and they serve we, a false god, yeah. a lot of them. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. We do need to take inventory and see where our relationship with God is. And that, that is, if we can start our day. Now, I'm a night person. Mm -hmm. I start the night before. Oh. <laughs> so I'm, I'm ahead of the person. game. Yeah. I'm a night person, yeah. so I can, I can stay up and yeah. get in God's Word. Yeah. We are out of time. This has been so rich. I, I do hope that you took down the information. Uh, because this book would really enrich your life and this would repeat it year after year. Hey, join me next time remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.